The Chinese fleet has two big advantages over the U.S. fleet. But there's one way the Americans might fix this imbalance, robots. The People's Liberation Army Navy aims to fight close to the Chinese coast, in the China and Philippine seas. It's the naval equivalent of interior lines, the principle in land warfare that gives defenders an advantage over attackers. When you're defending in a circle around a single point, your supply lines are never very long. An attacker, by contrast, must stretch its supply lines over a much longer distance as it chooses one axis of attack or another. In this context the US Navy is the attacker, in the sense that most of its ships must travel thousands of miles from their home ports in order to engage the Chinese Navy in the likeliest war zones. Moreover, the China Navy has the advantage of strategic simplicity. The central tenet of the Chinese Communist Party's foreign policy is to reunify Taiwan with China, by brute force if necessary. The Chinese fleet can organize and train for a singular, one-time mission across the Taiwan Strait. The U.S. fleet, by contrast, must support Washington's global foreign policy every day, day after day deterring not only China, but also Russia, Iran, and North Korea. Patrolling for smugglers. Training with allies. Simply put, Beijing can build small cheap warships, and lots of them, and still align its force structure with its strategy. To achieve the same alignment, Washington has to build big expensive warships, and thus can afford comparatively fewer of them. The huge number of tiny ships in the Chinese Navy order of battle illustrates both of Beijing's main maritime advantages. China possesses the biggest navy in the world by number of hulls, the U.S. Defense Department confirmed in its latest report on Beijing's armed forces. The China Navy has 355 major frontline ships in three regional fleets arrayed along the Chinese coast. The U.S. Navy has 305 major frontline ships, divided roughly 60-40 between the Pacific and Atlantic fleets. But more than 100 of the Chinese Navy ships in this tally are either Type 056 corvettes displacing 1,500 tons or Type 045 frigates displacing around 4,000 tons. The smallest U.S. Navy ships in this count are around 20 littoral combat ships displacing 3,000 tons. Because the American fleet is top-heavy with 68 Arleigh Burke-class destroyers displacing more than 9,000 tons, to say nothing of the 100,000-ton supercarriers and other huge ships, it boasts a total tonnage of 4.5 million. The Chinese Navy altogether displaces just 2 million tons despite possessing 50 more hulls than the U.S. Navy has. This disparity is a function of geography and strategy. With its modest fuel capacity and marginal seakeeping, a Chinese corvette isn't suitable for long-range operations. But the Chinese fleet doesn't need to sail far from home in order to support Beijing's foreign policy. Indeed, it must travel no farther than 100 miles from the Chinese coast in order to fight the war China is most determined to fight. So it makes sense for the Chinese fleet to load up on small ships. It doesn't make sense for the U.S. fleet to do the same thing. Would we rather have China's fleet? Certainly not. The U.S. Navy's obligations are myriad and far-flung. Its ships need to be able to sail thousands of miles at a time, while efficiently conducting peacetime patrols and, in a crisis, signaling battle stations for a high-tech clash over Taiwanese independence. As long as China's ambitions are regional and myopically focused on Taiwan, and as long as the United States is a global power with global obligations, the Chinese can continue buying lots of cheap small ships, while the U.S. Navy has little choice but to buy big expensive ships in smaller numbers. Expect over the long term for the China Navy to have more ships than the U.S. Navy does, while never matching the U.S. fleet's much greater total displacement. But if there's anything that can disrupt this dynamic, it's robotics. Talking about unmanned systems, it's a whole other story, the U.S. Navy in peacetime needs big ships. For the Americans, small ships are a wasting asset in anything but a total war over, say, Taiwan. They'd be idle until the apocalypse. But unmanned surface vessels might just thread the needle of America's broad responsibilities. 
A USB that can stay tied up pierside wouldn't cost much to maintain during the years, decades, even when there's no major war for it to fight. Washington could, in essence, build two fleets, a multi-mission peacetime fleet that's heavy with big ships, plus a wartime fleet with lots and lots of small, cheap, heavily armed unmanned vessels. America's peacetime fleet would look small in a direct, hull-to-hull -hull comparison with China's own fleet. But add the USBS during the crisis, and the US Navy could match or surpass the Chinese in terms of hulls, all by copying the Chinese approach of deploying lots of small ships for a single explosive purpose. War for Taiwan. If that concept sounds familiar, it's because that's exactly what US Navy leaders want to do as they ramp up fleet experimentation with a wide array of robotic ship types. The challenge is to get the US Congress on board with the plan and help the American public understand that, in certain situations, the fleet with fewer hulls might be the better fleet. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days.